Ian Bell reflecting on an extraordinary, controversial day at Trent Bridge. Batting at number three in place of the injured Jonathan Trott, he dominated the morning session, passing 50. In the afternoon, the man who'd never scored a test century at number three was putting that record to rights. But then, the ball before tea, the controversy began. Owen Morgan playing it to deep backward square. Both the fielder and the batsman seemed to assume it had crossed the boundary, but in fact, as replays confirmed, it hadn't. Bell and Morgan were actually walking off for tea, unaware that at the other end, Bell was being run out. The umpires conferred, were told about television replays, and the verdict was Bell run out for 137. He's called over there. Although Bell seemed to believe that the over and session had been brought to a close by this. If you go by the letter of the law, the ball was still alive and they just walked out of their crease. But in the spirit of the game, that's not on. When the Indian team walked out after tea, the Trent Bridge crowd gave their verdict on the apparent spirit of the game only then to see Bell return, the tourists having withdrawn their appeal. England applauded the move, and the crowd's boos turned to cheers in a most extraordinary moment of Test cricket. He's had a little time to reflect and said he withdraws the appeal, and that's within his right to do so. It is within his right to do so. I can think of a few captains, and maybe I'd have been one who wouldn't have done so. I think Ian Bell's a lucky lad. It then emerged that Strauss and Andy Flower had asked MS Dhoni and Duncan Fletcher to reconsider during the tea interval and that the Indian team had agreed. Bell's reprieve meant he was able to pass the 150 mark. He went soon afterwards, history recording a magnificent and memorable for all kinds of reasons, 159. Overshadowed by Bell and the controversy was a pugnacious 63 from Kevin Peterson a return to form 70 from Owen Morgan. A quick-fire, unbeaten half-century from Matt Pryor. And a late flurry from Tim Bresnan, which left England with a lead of 374 going into day four. Day three ending in smiles, thankfully, after everything that had gone before. Mike Staniforth, Sky Sports. I think the umpire took the jumper out of his, uh, the, obviously just behind his back and started to walk over to the bowler and it all just looked like it was going straight towards tea. And um, yeah, obviously the right, you know, things have, have happened, I guess, for the spirit of the game, but you know, it's, um, yeah, it was, it was a shame. Did Owen try and send you back at any stage saying, hang on, the ball's still live? Not at all. I think, like I said, we were both um, a bit shocked, really, with what, what was sort of going on. We didn't sort of really realise what had happened until we were sort of halfway off and we were told to stay on the ground. You know, we just thought, you know, we'll go straight to the team. Now, we saw you with Tim Robinson here, the fourth umpire, and you were saying, well, the umpire's called over. Well, it looked like it was all going that way, you know, and it, obviously things happened in a bit of a rush and all things were going there, but, yeah, it was difficult. Like I said, hopefully the right decision's been made um, and the spirit of the game has been, has been kept and, and done really well. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was a dis disappointing way to finish the tea. So when you got upstairs for the tea break, what was the chat? Oh, you know, we still had to wait, you know. Obviously that decision had been made. Um, I, I guess captains and coaches met. And um, I, I guess we wanted to see if that was the way, you know, the decision was going to stand and whether they were going to come back and change it. Obviously, I had to wait until the last minute to, to know I was going to go back out and bat. But um, uh, I think for, you know, the way it's been handled has been fantastic. And like I said, the spirit of the game, you know, has been, you know, it's been fantastic from both teams today. When we went back in, there wasn't a nice feeling uh, in the dressing room and the discussion had already started that probably what happened uh, was not right, you know. And... Uh, and when, um, you know, sort of Flaar and, and Strauss came down to discuss it with Dhoni and, and Fletch, uh, you know, there was already a discussion going on in the dressing room that, that maybe, you know, what happened was not in the spirit of the game. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the team met and there was complete unanimity in the decision that, uh, you know, we need to reinstate uh, Ian and give him an opportunity to keep playing because, uh, because it just wasn't right. So just to be clear, the team had a strong input into that decision. It did, and I'm led by uh, led by Dhoni. I think Dhoni, uh, you know, I think he led it and led it beautifully. I thought he discussed the whole issue with everyone. Obviously, you didn't want, uh, you know, you didn't want people walking out of the dressing room, uh, sort of uh, 
not sure about the decision or, or not fully behind the decision, but it was nice to see that everyone was behind the decision and everyone realised uh, there was a little bit of a bitter feeling in the, in, in the stomach when they came in for tea. Technically, though, he was out. He was out. I mean, technically, the loss of the game says he was out. So it probably did help that it was tea time and everyone went in and, and you could see the discussion had already started that uh, maybe, you know, it wasn't right. And it wouldn't, we wouldn't, it, would have been, it wouldn't have been nice if it had happened to one of our batsmen. I mean, Tony was definitely right to initially appeal for the wicket, wasn't he? He was. I mean, the laws of the game were there. We, you know, and it's tough when it's happening as well. You're not really sure whether he's going for the run, what's happening with you, sort of jogging off. So it's, it's, it was all really confusing. But obviously, when you come back and you see it on TV and you look at it, then you know that probably, you know, um, probably the right thing was done by allowing him to bat again. Well, the ICC described India's gesture as very special. But former England captain Nasser Hussain thinks Bell was at fault and was lucky to be given a second chance. In the letter of the law of the game, he was out and should have been given out. I thought he was a bit dopey. I thought he made an error um, walking off when over hadn't been called. It was almost like he took over the role of being umpire. I've got 150 not out, so I'm going to say it's over. I'm going to say it's four, and I'm going to say it's T. And that's up to the umpire to do that. And India were well in their rights to take the bails off and appeal and review the decision. And the umpires did it spot on and were well right to give him out. So I think nearly everything was done, done spot on. And at tea time, the Indian side sat down with Dhoni and discussed it. And they said, we don't quite feel right about this, so we'll ask Bell to come back. He was a lucky lad. Was that the right thing for Mahendra Singh Dhoni to do? Yes, I mean, when you understand the kind of pressure that he would have faced in that little time, I don't know whether there was any communication from the cricket board of India to Mahindra Singh Dhoni. But, you know, this is such a high-profile tour. You know, the whole world is watching the series between India and England. India, the number one ranked team, so they want to also look good on a, high, on a big stage. Same incident in West Indies at Dominique with nobody watching. Perhaps, uh, you know, Mahindra Singh Dhoni would have stood his ground. I thought India was being a bit too kind by withdrawing the appeal. So I think the only guy who was really at fault there was Ian Bell. And I thought India didn't cheat. There was nothing unethical about it. They were still very alive to the situation, especially young Abhinav Mukund. You know, when you watch him, he's constantly aware of what exactly is happening. So yes, but finally, I, I'm, 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 at, I'm at peace with what's happened at the end, you know, because of the nature of the series. Would we have had this result had this happened in the middle of a session as opposed to the last delivery before tea? No, uh, that was the vital thing. I know it wouldn't ha have happened anyway because Bell was walking off for that reason. It was T. But your point is a good one. If he had gone from one ball to the next ball, because the moment the bowler's ready at the start of his mark to bowl, so a couple of minutes later, that's it. Pryor would have been in, and that's it. Bell's gone, and it would have caused a huge furore. I mean, the ground kicked off after T when they didn't realise what was happening. And I think that this series would have then been played in really bad taste, and hence what happened took the sting out of the whole event, which is the right thing to do. But because of time, time heals, and you can sit down, and you also have people off the field who can turn to you and say, you sure you want to do this? You really, you know, Duncan Fletcher, my sat, the other players, you sure, Mahindra, you want to do this? We don't feel comfortable. You get that little bit of time and you say, OK, for the greater good of the game, we will take back the, the, uh, the appeal. But I think if the next ball happens straight away, job done, Bell was gone. And another former England captain, Michael Atherton, agrees that Bell was lucky to be given a reprieve and compared the incident with the decision to give out Harbhajan Singh LBW on day two. There's not much difference, really, mm -hmm. from seeing the second wicket of Stuart Broad's hat-trick, which was seen by all on the big screen to be a massive inside edge, and all the England players knew. What, are, what then is the difference? If you're going to take mm -hmm. it on yourself to make the decisions, what is the difference? So I don't think India did anything wrong, mm -hmm. um, and I think in this instance, the spirit of the game has kind of subverted the laws of the game, and all these emails, come, uh, press releases coming from the ECB and the ICC, I mean, they've got to get real. Um, you know, they kind of jump on a bandwagon and don't really sort out the serious issues in the game. Um, this really was an issue for the laws of the game and not the spirit of the game. Well, this is the law which governs the withdrawal of an appeal. Law 27, Section 8 reads, The captain of the fielding side may withdraw an appeal only if he obtains the consent of the umpire within whose jurisdiction the appeal falls. He must do so before the outgoing batsman has left the field of play, but, of course, in this instance, Bell had left the field of play, as had all the players, because of the tea interval. And the law goes on to say, if such consent is given, the umpire concerned shall, if applicable, revoke his decision and recall the batsman.
Well, there is precedent for similar incidents. In December 2006, Murulitharam was given out after leaving his crease to congratulate Kumar Sangakkara on reaching a century. Sri Lanka's captain, Mahila Jai Wardner, questioned Brendan McCullum's decision to knock the bales off, but the run out stood and there was no reprieve. And New Zealand were on the receiving end at the Oval. That was in 2008. Uh, England's ethics were questioned when Ryan Sidebottom collided with Grant Elliott, knocking the batsman to the ground. With Elliott out of his crease, he was run out. The umpire, Mark Benson, asked Captain Paul Collingwood if he was going to appeal for the dismissal. Collingwood confirmed that he would, and Elliott was given out.